Hello friends, welcome to BISPtrainings.com. My name is Sumit and I'm a subject matter expert in R programming. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how can we analyze the log files within R and how can we visualize it. So as all of you know that R, it comes in discussions of heavy duty scientific and statistical analysis. But there are a couple of other things within R that we can perform or we can do the log file analysis within R. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to read the log files within R and then I'm going to visualize that R uh, means I'm going to visualize that log files by using R programming. So first of all, let me show you the file which has been included. So I have got one access log file and let me open this access log file in notepad and I'm opening this in a notepad and you can see you can see that's my log file this log file contains huge number of records with along with date and time and we have got year as well year and year for 2004 for uh, with along with date and time and I'm going to visualize it so I'm very much interested in visualizing this data so it's in March 11 March, 10 March and so on. So I'm very much interested in visualizing it. So what I will be doing, how we can visualize this data here actually. So first of, so first of all, we would be requiring, I'm going to use R Studio into this. So I'll use R Studio. R Studio. And in this R Studio, uh, first of all, I will read the log files into a data frame. So I will read this log file into a data frame. So I create new file R script and here I write df is equal to read. Uh, I will ignore update right now. Read dot table and the file name. So my file name in the, my file resides on my desktop. So I copy the complete URL C users desktop. And it's on my R Studio. Double quotes, double quotes close, and it should be in this one, this one, and my file name. So file name is file name is access underscore log. Extension is not required because it's a log file, so there is no need of extension. I simply pass access dot log, and now when I select and run it, when I select and run. You can see the data, uh, the table has been loaded. The access log file has been loaded into DF as a data frame. There are 1546 observation for eight variables. If I open this in a tabular format, you can see there are 546 observation means records. Observation here means it represents records, number of records and eight variables means eight attributes. So you can see the attributes. We have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 v7 and v8 fine next is uh, i'm going to clean the format and uh, let's say let's set their labels so that we would be able to understand it so i set here column names column names i want to set column names for this data frame is equal to c the first will be first name i set as host Second name I set as ident or basically identity. Third one will be author, author uh, basically auth author sir. Then it would be date. Then as you can see here, if I'll open this, the first one, second and third is blank. Then we have date. Then we have time, date and time. This is something like time. So I'll set this date and time and request. This is for request. Then we have status. This is first. Uh, this is number of bytes and this is number of duration. So we can depend. It depends on we can set the values as accordingly. So date, comma, uh, instead of timing because we don't have time. So what I'm doing, I'm just uh, I'm just setting here uh, request. Instead of that, I'll just I'll just treat this as status. This is status. This is byte. 
and this is duration so i'm just skipping time here i'm not using time so i write date comma request it should be in single quotes request comma and we have bytes so we have one two three four five six and if you look at here one v one v two v three v four we have up to seven and eight so five is date and time this one six seven and eight so two and three is blank so two is this three is this four we have date five we have uh, request six uh, let's suppose six i will treat as status as t a t u s status seven we have bytes and third and the last one we have is duration so basically i'm just renaming the columns it should be equal and let's look at the column names if we again open it so you can see we have the column names host ident authorizer date request status bytes and duration so we set the values to we set the column names to it now uh, the date and time so i want to split the date and time first so i'm going to split this date and time because this at present here this date and time they are together so i want to separate the date from the time so for this i write here df dollar date is equal to as dot date as dot date and uh, df dollar date and it should be in which format it should be in date dby so basically date and y something like this so i'll just write percent d percent b percent y and let's execute it Uh, we need to be very careful because it's a case sensitive language so we have to be very careful and you see it has been done so let's open it and you see the date has been separated so date has been stored in df dollar date so it has been stored into this one so as you can see here i have made a slight change uh, i i use time and i remove the duration one and then i mentioned df dollar date is equal to it should be in capital and when i execute it when i run it up when i run it and if you open this so you see we have dates date time request and uh, status and bytes status and bytes and these two columns are blank and that's the host now the next step is uh, next step is i just wanted to display head head df head df and when i run it it only shows me the status status and all the records along with date and time now but the item of uh, immediate interest is simply the number of request so i am interested in number of request based on the date so here i write r e q s request is equal to as dot data dot frame and here i write table df dollar date and when we execute it it creates a new request with six observation with two variables and when we open it we have six observation in march 2004 we have 196 uh, basically we can say third of uh, we can do it as 37 this is year uh, month and date so 7 8 9 10 11 12 so on different dates we have different number of frequency so we have uh, and on to in 2004 march 7 that's the record on 2004 march 8 these are the number of logs in 2004 march 9 these are the number of logs so basically so now let's move it ahead and uh, i am going to quickly visualize it because we have got the uh, number of 
we have got number of logs in a given on a given date on different dates now i want to visualize it through charts so let's make couple of charts so first of all i'm going to you i'm going to create one line chart and then i will use same as bar chart as well so for creating charts we'll be using G, uh, ggplot so i'm going to import the library so i set the library as library and the library which i will be going to use it as gg plot so if gg plot library is not available with you so either you can install the library you can include the library from here go to package install package and here we can mention gg plot so it will gg plot so you can see the gg plot has been updated to gg plot 2 uh, so it's already satisfied in my system so i don't have to install it i simply set the library as gg plot gg plot 2 i'll set as gg plot 2 so i don't have to install it again gg plot 2 and run it so i set the library now i'm going to visualize it so for visualization i write gg plot data is equal to data is coming from rqs request the observation which we have created the request then comma we need to set the axis so aes axis on x axis i want to show the dates as dot date and from variable one so as specify as where one comma y is equal to frequency uh, let's say frequent freq double quote uh, double brackets plus geom the type will be geom underscore line we can have bar as well so bar will try later on so i'll set it as geom underscore line so it will create a line plus x label so i set the x label as date plus y label i said the y label as number of request q u e s t s request and let's execute it so i simply select it and click on run so when i click on run uh, you see a bar chart has been generated and we have on the x axis we have the dates march 7 march 8 march 9 march 10 march 11 march 12 so there are six observation so 8, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and numbers you can see 196 then it, 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 it increased to 559 then it dropped down and then finally on 2004 12th March it's 73. So it's going down so that's how we can represent it through a bar and I want to add a label as well. I want to add the label so that's the way we can add we can create a line chart. Now if I want to create a bar chart out of it so what I'll do I simply use the same state same thing and uh, here i want to show the status so what i will be doing uh, data is equal to df ax is equal to x format i'll simply customize it and i write it again so i write gg plot gg plot i write data is equal to df comma aes axis x is equal to format format status plus geom underscore bar so it would be in bar format plus x label on x label it will show status so basically it's a number of status and i want to show the status and count so we have a status status and number of status number of counts so status count so and i write plus y label count and let's execute it so when we execute it we can see it's a, so on 200 there are a number of counts for 302 how many number of counts 304 401 404 so these are the number of these are status basically so see 401 200 so it depends so basically like this we can read the log files in r and if we want to export the images as png for the blog so or by assigning the chart to a variable p and printing like so p so what we can do we can store it as a png and we can print it so i can simply write png png name of png i'll write image so for example i want to save on my desktop so simple i give desktop and 
I'll just specify the location desktop and I'll give I'll say image name dot png and we can directly print it from here as well print so we can uh, arguments and it is a general which means that new printing methods can be easily added for our new class so we can print it from here print so when I execute this command png command and it stores on my desktop named as e image name dot png so let's have a like image name dot png and this So it should run together actually we have to run it together and then we can or either we can export in our pdf as well so both the ways are fine so so that's how we can analyze the log files using our programming if you have any queries you can write to us on www.bsptrainings.com you can subscribe our youtube channel for more videos on our programming keep watching have a nice day goodbye